Well, we are now kind of racing towards the Oscars, and something you may have heard about this, kind of controversial happened. It got announced that the Oscars were going to run Barbie in the best adapted screenplay category as opposed to original screenplay. Now, of course, adapted screenplay is supposed to mean that your screenplay is built on another previous work, whether that's a novel, a previous television show, a short story, whatever. That's supposed to be the kind of thing that differentiates best adapted screenplay from best original screenplay. Now, originally Barbie had been running <clears throat> and was running and, and campaigning under the best original screenplay, but they shifted gears and went to best adapted screenplay, which of course is complete bull crap because this is not adapted from anything. And comedy legend Judd Apatow came out, who's a writer himself, member of the WGA, came out and had some words for it. And, and this is what he said. This comes just from Variety, who said the following. It's insulting to the writers to say that they were working off of existing material. The Knocked Up and This Is 40 director wrote on Twitter on Saturday. There was no existing material or story. There was a clear box. Meanwhile, Variety says, the Writers Guild of America has designated Barbie as an original work, and it will remain in that category for the upcoming WGA Awards. So, <coughs> we've got a movie here where in one major writing award ceremony, the WGA, it's going to be listed as what it should be, original screenplay, versus the Oscars who have decided for whatever reason, to allow Barbie to run into the best adapted screenplay category. Now, look, <clears throat> I can already hear some people, but John, Barbie's a thing. Yes, but toasters are a thing. And if a toaster is in an original movie, you don't change it to best adapted screenplay. Well, I mean, there's a toaster in it. Yes, but the, no, nothing that was in the Barbie movie has ever existed in story form before with the, and aligned with a Barbie product. Ever. This was an original screenplay. Period. End of story. That's it. And that's why you got some people in the WGA like Judd Apatow coming out and saying, this isn't just dumb. This is insult the brave little toaster. This is not just dumb. I love that cartoon. Says Apatow, this is straight up insulting. And the WGA themselves are going to continue to run under best original screenplay. So Rob, I mean, to me, unless somebody comes out at some point and says, oh no, there was actually this 1967 short story written about Barbie's trek to the real world. And it, it, it narrates and chronicles Barbie leaving Barbie land and going into the real world. And they adapt. I'll get that. But this to me is an absolute head scratcher. Like on what basis are they justifying calling this an adapted screenplay when the WGA is saying, no, no, this is an original screenplay. How do you see this? Well, I got to tell you, at first I was like, Judd Apatow, yes, you're right. I'm, I'm, I was completely 100% on board. And then I started to read some other articles. And first of all, there has been a number of Barbie animated things. And and then the point that was made that I, ha I couldn't concede is that the characters of Barbie, Ken, Skipper, all the different rainbow-colored Barbies over the years, the Barbie dream house, the realm that they live in, the yellow, the pink Corvette and the pink car, all of that stuff previously existed. And the actual character of Barbie, while had never been depicted in a feature film, Barbie, with all of her accoutrements, that everything they'd given her from the 1950s up to the present day, as a character or as a doll, already existed so they didn't create barbie from whole cloth so they had 50 or 60 years of stuff that they looked at and said okay if we had to turn this into a movie here's all the stuff that we have to look at how would we take this so they did adapt the doll and turn it into something real so, and it even says in the movie, I think they call it based on the character of Barbie owned by Mattel or something in the film. So from a, from a technical standpoint, I would say, yes, it's based on a bunch of stuff that previously existed. On the other hand, I personally believe that, no, 
you can't you when you take an inanimate object like a toaster and and figure out a way to turn a toaster into a character that's original so so everything they did and the story they came up with and the the characterization like there is no old crazy barbie you know some wide wise sage like barbie that lives up on a hill in a in a hippie commune that was an you know so what they did with barbie was i think completely original their deadline rate a good point about this when they said <clears throat> when you look at the history of biographies in hollywood whenever you had a biography of, um, say, a historical figure where that biography, that movie, that biopic was based on a something written about that character. Uh, uh, the um, um, why am I freezing on the name of Steve? Uh, uh, Steve from Apple. Steve uh, Jobs. Steve Jobs. Jobs. There was actually a book written about Steve Jobs, and then the one biopic was based on that book. Right. And it was under the category then of adapted screenplay. Sure. However, as Deadline pointed out, there have been biographies that were not based on previous works, like based on real live people, and yet categorized properly as original screenplay. Okay, well, there you go. And so it's it's really confusing to see the fact that you got the WGA, the actual writers saying, no, this is original, but the... Academy saying something different. It's going to be really interesting to see how this kind of shit and what kind of precedence this sends later, uh, later on. I just want to be clear though. For me, Barbie should be an original screenplay. I think nobody puts Barbie in the adapted <laughs> corner. I agree, guys. We want to take a second to thank a sponsor of today's episode. Masterclass. Everyone, it's a new year. So picture that thing that you've always wanted to learn. Now, picture learning it from a person who's literally one of the best in the world at it. And that's what you get with Masterclass. This year, learn from the best to become your best with Masterclass. Don't just talk about improving. Masterclass helps you actually do it. Because Masterclass offers over 180 world-class instructors. So whether you want to master negotiation with Chris Voss, like I did, think like a boss with Martha Stewart, or learn the the art of storytelling from the man himself, Neil Gaiman. Masterclass has you covered. Because with Masterclass, you get unlimited access to intimate one-on-one -on -one classes with the world's best. At Masterclass, there are over 200 classes to pick from, with new classes being added every month. And if you're a viewer of The John Campus Show, you probably love movie making, storytelling, television. So you'd be totally interested in things like screenwriting from Aaron Sorkin. Learn developing original TV series from Stranger Things as the Duffer Brothers. Or maybe you like the music side of movies, where well, you can learn film scoring from Hans Zimmer. And right now, our listeners will get an additional 15% off an annual membership at Master masterclass.com slash campia get 15 percent off right now at masterclass.com slash campia masterclass.com slash campia hey guys thanks so much for watching this video make sure you like the video leave a comment and subscribe to our channel and don't forget we have a daily podcast called the john campia show podcast available on apple podcast spotify or your favorite podcasting app of choice go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it